Welcome back to I'm Building a Plane and you're joining me as I'm doing something that makes me a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm drilling the holes here in the elevator for the trim tab uh, which is here and will fit on something like this. So we've got two holes so far. This is all a little bit nerve wracking um, but we're getting there. That's not good. As you can see, this is just how easy it is to make a mistake. Trying to drill a hole in a rounded trailing edge tube that is coated in x lam is not the easiest thing in the world. Luckily, I made a trip to Flylight recently and had this hole repaired. So all being well, the holes are drilled and all being well, they're going to fit. So we'll find out now for sure. Well, this really is riveting stuff. One in. Okay, so I've just fitted the uh, trim tabs to the elevator uh, it's upside down here so those are the control horns that I fitted there they're just with bolts um, the trim tabs actually riveted to the elevator uh, just on the underside and then there's a hole has to be drilled here 230 mil from uh, the end of this tube um, and yeah, that's what we're up to in a second. So uh, that's all it's asking me to do for this minute in time. It's not asking me to actually hook any cables up or anything yet. Um, sorry, poo bags there. Look, I've got Barney with me today. Barney, come here. Come say hello. Say hello. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Um, so the next job is the tailplane. And it's saying... The tailplane and elevators are assembled and trial fitted at this stage, uh, then removed to fit the fuselage fairing. So it's presumably it's just to make sure everything fits. It's asking to start with the horizontal stabilizer uh, and select the four short cables which brace the tail surfaces and attach the upper cables to the back of the vertical stabilizer. So that's the first job. So let's see if we can find those. Uh, these are apparently the cables without turnbuckles. Um, 
the joys of working in a hangar on your own, I don't with you heard that. <laughs> uh, Annie's gone to go and get us some lunch. Um, so, let's see if we can find those cables. Welcome back to Let's Go Flying and this new mini-series, I'm Building a Plane. Um, I have done some work on the plane uh, over the past uh, uh, day, but not an awful lot. Basically, what I've done, I'll talk you through. Um, the reason I'm not recording it is because it's been very monotonous. Uh, but ultimately, I have uh, started to fit the tailplane. Um, they call it a trial fitting because you do actually have to remove it. Uh, and I've got as far as fitting the port elevator. Barney's down there, look, behaving himself, keeping watch over the project next to Anna. And obviously got the bracing cables in place. The next job is to fit the elevator joiner. It doesn't actually give you a part number in the manual, but it's actually SKR124. And I found that here. And what it's asked you to do is to slip this over the port elevator and then fit the starboard elevator. Um, which is what we're going to do next. So, interesting. Um, so, I'm going to get on with that now and uh, I'll see you in just a moment. So, that's not down on that side. It would just be far simpler. If the gap between the horizontal stabilizer here and the elevator was the same and it would just sit the same all the way through, but it's not, it's, there's about a centimeter difference. Otherwise that just sits back up. Um, hi buddy. No, we're just doing some filming. Um, so, hmm. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it safe. And uh, I'm going to take some photos and I'm going to email them to Paul at Flylight and see what he says. We'll figure it out anyway, and I'll let you know what I've done, but this is one of the more intricate things that you really don't want to get wrong. So, um, you know, it's just all about, uh, about getting it right first time, not having any problems, and, uh, and making a bloody good aeroplane, because that's what I'm trying to do here, remember? I am trying to make a really, really good plane. I don't just want to make one for the sake of it. I want this to be excellent <laughs> i want it to be amazing i want it to fly fantastically i want it to perform perfectly and uh, these are all the little things that matter now just got to put the uh, the time and effort in and i'll get out what i put in at the end barney what are you whinging at hey welcome back to let's go flying and i'm building a plane do you like my goals um so last night i uh gave up almost on drilling. Um, now what I've done, I did speak to Paul. <laughs> so by me doing this and finding out these things, hopefully this answers a lot of people's questions who uh, are doing a similar build. So uh, what I'll do, I'll turn you around and I'll show you. Um, now in the manual, it says to take two battens. I took that very literally and I had one on either side when really it should be two, uh, one on top of the other. Um, and that holds the elevator straight. So you tie them tight with a cable tie at this end, and then exactly the same at the other end over there. So you've got one above, one below, and exactly the same on this side, and that should keep your um, elevators in the same position. Uh, now, obviously you fit the port elevator first, and then you fit the sleeve here, and then you fit the starboard elevator. Um, now, this has taken me ages so i've finally bit the bullet and i've done the first two holes and i've got the first two bolts in and i've just got to do the second now which is dead easy but it was all about aligning this top part here um, and making sure this was absolutely right it's been difficult making sure this uh, this bracket here is at the right angle um so it's at the same angle as the elevator and therefore you should get the same underneath and also 
this under here, hiya Barney, um, should be 90 degrees uh, to the elevator, the actual bracket there as well, which it just about is. And you've got to do this by a combination of sight and creating your own different method of doing it. Um, and, uh, and that's that really. So it all seems to be going well so far. Uh, just got to do the final hole here and a final hole here. So we'll get those drilled, get the bolts in, and then we can look and see what's next in the manual. And I can finally put this chapter behind me because that has been quite stressful. I've spent hours just figuring out exactly where to drill the hole. You know, they do say measure twice, cut once. I think I've measured about 560 times. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty confident it's right. Fingers crossed. Uh, let's get these second holes drilled anyway. I, uh, I don't need the goggles so much for the top holes, uh, but underneath you do kind of get showered with metal. So, um, because you drill the top hole first and then the bottom hole. And currently, I'm just covered in these tiny little shards of aluminium. Really sharp they are as well. Keep digging into me. So we'll get this one done now. So you use this bracket almost like a jig um, and you want to go perpendicular into it. So that's the first one. Get this second one done underneath. God, it's sharp, this stuff. It? Yeah, it's metal, isn't it? Little metal splinters all over me. Um, so I'll put this next bolt in now. <coughs> um, let's grab the nuts and bolts. And then, again, check nothing's moved. It all looks fine and dandy, that. Now I can do the final hole, and as I say, I'll put this bit behind me now. Well, I'm glad that's done. <gasps> Get all these little bits of metal. Can you see them everywhere, all over me? Metal. Shards of sharp, horrible metal. Lovely. Right. We should have two nicely linked up elevators. Which it certainly does look like we've got. Um, so now it's a case of seeing what's next in the manual. Now then, it's the rudder horn assembly next. So more drilling and cutting. How wonderful. Thoroughly looking forward to that. Um, so let me gather together what I need to, to do this next part and uh, we shall crack on. Next job is to get the rudder horn assembly fitted um, and what it's asked me to do is to get the rudder and then remove the fabric over the six millimeter holes in the rudder leading edge spar with a soldering iron. Lovely. Just what I love doing is putting holes in freshly covered new um, control surfaces. All fun and games, eh? What it's saying to me is that there should be a six mil hole somewhere, according to this, just above here. I should be able to feel it with my fingers. Interesting. So it should be somewhere around here. <laughs> I can't feel the hole. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> the drawing. <laughs> the drawing says um, that it's just above 
just above here, just above the second bit. So, these holes can be felt through the covering. <laughs> I can't find it. I can't find the. Am I? Am I? Look. There's, there's two holes, look. Well, that's got to be it, hasn't it? Okay, I found it, but it's not where I thought it was. Um, so, let's pop Mr. Ruddy down over here for a moment. And we'll get the old soldering iron cranked up. So you've got gas in it. So here's the hole here. Just found it. Ooh. Oh, it goes against everything in the in your nature to do that. What's up? Is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's just to burn the hole there. It's still not quite all done. There we go. One. It is a bit scary. I don't like doing it. So, well, since we've run out of gas. There we go. That was mission accomplished. That wasn't so bad. It wasn't, actually. You did give me a funny look halfway through. Yeah, I was like, there's no going back, is there? Is there no, there's not, unfortunately. That is very true. But yeah, that's done, and it's fine. Okay, so uh, put in place the bracing angles and secure them lightly with a 6mm plain shank length bolt through the hole. So I need to find the bracing angles now for the... Uh, uh, for the rudder, which I think are here. This is them. So this next part here, um, we've got a horizontal uh, support brace inside the rudder, which is here. Now this needs to sit uh, just behind this bar and just below the horizontal support brace. So this goes in between which you pop on like this, and this goes on the other side, um, and this goes over the top, and it's just about getting it absolutely bob on, and then making a hole for it. I really don't like putting holes in stuff. Oh wow, look at that. It's been a hole in the desk. I thought I could smell something. So I need four milli bolts now. Uh, rudder, 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 nothing there. So four mil. <laughs> it's soldering iron. Uh, little bit of advice, don't get a gas soldering iron, you crap. Okay, so I now need another hole. <laughs> Straight through here and through the other side. Wow. <laughs> it's not your favourite part, is it? No, drilling holes is not my favourite part. 
Welcome back to I'm Building a Plane, uh, Let's Go Flying Special. Just to pick up where we left off before, what I've done, I've actually got quite far. So I've fitted the rudder. Um, we've got the control horns for the rudder, they're fitted. That was a little bit daunting because we had to actually cut holes or burn holes, I should say, with a soldering iron into the rudder itself, which is a little bit stressful. And the same on this side. Um, and obviously rivet these control horns on, which was riveting. Um, <laughs> we've now got a working elevator as well. Uh, everything slots in nice and easy. Rudder moves nice and free. There's, it says no discernible friction. I mean, there's not really. That's fairly loose. Um, so the next job is the control cables. So I started getting them out and trying to sort out which ones are which. Um, um, we've got the elevator cables and the uh, rudder cables to hook up first of all. So I'm going to crack on with that now and uh, we'll catch up with you shortly. Welcome back. Last night I finished the tailplane. Um, so we've got the horizontal and vertical stabilizers all installed now. Um, the uh, support bracing cables here got a nice free moving rudder and next job is to hook up the control cables so I made a very brief start here um, with the rudder cables um, so we've just hooked those up loosely and now it's time to run the elevator cables through which I'm just about to start so while we're at it we might as well get this other cable through and it saves me having to destruct it all afterwards it's a bit of a pain so let's just feed that through it's just this pulley system i'm worried about at the moment or i'm concentrating on at the moment i should say okay so now these ones need to be fed through there we go now this one goes through the what's gone here how's that got through there oh that's the other one uh, that's the one so this one goes through here So now, start putting it back together. So we need a washer on the end, like this. Washer, washer, washer. So again, uh, we've got a washer. And then a pulley. And then we need another washer. There, then that goes through. Oops, right, so make sure we've got everything in the right hole there. Go through, all out the way. Uh, another washer and a pulley. And then another washer. This is one of those fiddly jobs. There we go. Washers on. Next washer. Sorry, next pulley I meant, and the washer, and then uh, this should be it. There we go. Okay. So next job. This pulley. Sorry, this is well. This this tang here attaches to this side of the stick um yeah the upper side that's the one we've got the shiny side on first castle nut just for the time being that will be fine um and then this one attaches to the lower side of the stick and that's the rudder and that's uh, the other rudder so I've got a confession to make I've made my first mistake I'll show you what that was basically when I drilled the elevators um, 
I didn't have this uh, wonderful tool here, which measures angles. Um, and it's very difficult to see. You can't actually see it when they're down here, but I strapped them up, drilled the holes. Um, and when I actually drilled the holes, I must have moved the position of one of the tubes with uh, the drill bit when it was actually uh, uh, drilling them. Anyway, long story short, I've got quite a difference between the, uh, if I measure at the same point here, there we go. So if we go off, this is the top, and this just touching the fabric, we've got 209.8 degrees there. If I take it to the same place, on the other side here, and I'll do it in the same place, we've got 205.9, so, so there's a bit of a difference um, between them. It's not a massive problem. Uh, I spoke to Paul and he said that if I send the elevator, they'll put a new leading edge tube onto it. Um, so I'm just deciding which one to send in at the moment, <laughs> which one's the better of the two uh, to stay on, and then send the other one down for him to uh, put a new tube on. So I'm just working out which one to send in at the moment. Um, so I'll send that down to uh, Flylight and they can put a new tube on it, send it back and then we can get it refitted. Now, in terms of the control cables, that's something that I'm currently working on now. Um, I finally got this pulley set up here. Uh, the pulley system's all set up. And again, I'm just tweaking the rest of it, getting all the, uh, the cables correct. Hi, Barney. Getting all the cables correct where they should be. And uh, from there, the next job is to get Steve Ayers back, my inspector, who will inspect the airframe, at which point he'll then hopefully sign that off for me, uh, say, yep, yeah, you're ready for the next step, put the engine in, and, uh, and also obviously build rear fuselage as well. So that's quite a big step actually towards getting this plane actually in the air, um, which I'm quite excited about. So yeah, I think we're getting there, making some progress. One mistake, it's not a massive problem. It's gonna cost me 60, 70 quid, something like that, but. Um, you know, it could have been a lot worse.